Welcome to Life This is George G, and the time is right. Welcome to today's guest, strong and powerful Mike Thorne. Mike, are you ready to do this? Absolutely. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it very much. Grateful for the opportunity. Excited to have you on. Mike is working to transform leaders into human beings by building personal trust communities. He's a Vistage chair. He's also the chairman of the National Council for Adoption, and he is the author of Hustle with Heart. Mike, tell us a little about your personal life, some more about your work, and why you do what you do. Yeah, I grew up in central Massachusetts, and we were living in a town called Sturbridge, about an hour west of Boston. Lived in a split-level home on Blueberry Lane, and my parents asked me to come down to the family room when I was nine. And when I walked down the family room, which was the old 1970s, typical New England home with the shag carpeting, the wood panel, the wood stove, the TV, and we had the tin foil on the TV because we could never get channel 38. And being a big sports family, we had to have the tin foil and play around with it. And they asked me to sit down at my favorite beanbag chair. My parents had the couch and they looked at each other. They looked at me and announced that uh, I should know that I'm adopted and they love me very much. Mm-hmm. And it really shattered my sense of self-worth, what family was and so on. And, and I ended up you know, walking to school the next day, thinking to myself, who gives up a kid? Like, what did I do wrong? And it shaped me in a lot of ways personally, because I realized that if I wasn't perfect, I would get abandoned again. And so I was very driven as a kid. I chose sports as my venue. And I was very, very fortunate. I was captain of my high school baseball and basketball teams, played undefeated football team in high school, ended up being the college baseball captain, Got married to my best friend, wife, now 32 plus years, three kids. But at age 40, I was president of Russell Athletic, which was my dream job. So I had a great family and got this dream job. And I thought despite these fears and abandonment issues I had, I was quite successful. But I got fired less than 15 months later. And I learned a lot of lessons. That nine-year-old boy came all the way back again on my shoulder, and I started having those fears of abandonment and what have you. But I met some of the most amazing people. They gave me incredible feedback. It felt like a two-by-four getting hit over the head with some of the things. Self-awareness, Mike, you're terrible at it. Um, But I also found that on the personal side, the people in the leadership team and the employees in the company, about 100 plus that worked for me, really, really gravitated to the time I spent with them personally. And I didn't realize how important it was. I did it very naturally because it mattered to me so much. And so I transformed myself and went to Yankee Candle at age 40 into a totally different industry and met a lady named Doran Exford who changed my life. And she really taught me the power of being intentional, the power of being empathetic, And more importantly, letting people know who I was because I was so afraid I'd get abandoned if I did. And it completely changed my life, has led me to the work I do because I see too many people in life, personally, profession, who don't show up as full selves. And I think there's something holding them back, some lived experience they went through. And so that's why I do the work I do. And I really look forward every day to trying to find people that I can help unlock themselves so they can live a full life. Well, I appreciate you sharing that. That's, uh, do you think that, that 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 most of us can look back and point to an experience in our childhood, probably not as as profound or traumatic necessarily as as you experienced, where it's had such a profound influence that we've carried with and haven't addressed? Yeah, it's a great question because, yes, I would say the majority of people do, and it can be simple things. And I would do this work, so I'll give you examples without naming names. Somebody, you know, grew up with their dad who they loved and admired, then found out their dad cheated on their mother. And so as a leader of a business, they always have these fears as they're leading the business. They never want to fully express themselves. I have someone who was a successful student and athlete in high school, and they got a college scholarship to a major university in Ivy League school. And then their dad, who was a successful businessman, lost his job. They ran out of money, had to move to a trailer park. 
she said, I, she was telling me the story and she said, oh my God, I've never thought about how that impacts me in my life today, raising my daughters and the work I do and the way I lead people. So yes, I think when everyone takes a few moments to step back, uh, I, I think I, I would say the best way to think about it is through life, we're climbing up this mountain to get to this top where we retire and we have this wonderful life and we try to fix things along the way. And I would say, if we just would go back down the mountain and start all over and say, geez, how did I get to where I am today? How am I, why am I the way I am today? It might help them unlock this stuff, which then would lead, help them lead a better life, I believe. Yeah, I think that that makes a lot of sense. We're conditioned to want to treat the symptoms by taking a pill or hacking yes. something. But if you really actually want to solve problems, unresolved problems, the very nature of, of, of unresolved problems or conflict or trauma, you need to get back to the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard. It's this is, listen, this is really, really hard work because it's yeah. scary. Um, I believe if people find that place where they know who they are and where they want to go, it, it should be scary, but also exciting, but not dangerous. When you get to that and everybody has that moment, I think it just takes a little bit of work to get there, but I, I enjoy the journey of taking people on to get them there. Cause it's, super powerful and people get unlocked like that really is cool to watch and the value the potential value the 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 prize at the end of the rainbow or at the new mountaintop is is what well you have a more fulfilled joyful life and you can start impacting those around you because i think a lot of us are so busy and so stressed that we end up bringing the rest of ourselves versus the best of us to our love relationships, both at work and home. And by that, I mean, we're so worried and so stressed about so many things. And a lot of it's internal that we're not showing up in the best way for the people that we care the most for. And we're not taking the time to unlock ourselves. So I, I would say that's really critical because then you become a better human being and then others become better because you're better and so on. And then society gets the bigger benefit because you're caring about others and not just stressed out all day long. Scary, but not dangerous. That's a, it's a great way, great way to put it. Uh, terrifying, right? Especially for, for you, 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 you achieved at this really, really high level, but carrying with you at all times, this, terror of 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 abandonment uh and that i mean imagine all the things that that led to i know me personally my folks split up when i was five and when i look backwards it was really scarcity and a lack of control and that's yeah. influenced so much of looking backwards for me probably around the same age around 40 i'd be like what's really going on here why why am I behaving the way that, 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 that I am in all these different scenarios? Um, and so I could certainly speak to, um, speak to the value of, of what you're talking about, but how do I do it? Yeah, it's interesting. I will, the lady Dorn asked me a question. She told me a question she was thinking about, and I talked to her a couple of years ago, so I'm 58. So it's been 17, 18 years. She said, Mike, when I first met you and you took over as president, I thought to myself, wow, this guy is asking himself a question. If people really knew me, would they even like me? Mm -hmm. And she never told me that back then, but it was so true because I was so fearful of un, un, you know, letting people know who I was. So to answer your question, uh, there's a couple of things I would say is first is you have to be ready because it's not an easy journey because you're going to start unlocking things. Um, I, I have a methodology that I've found that has worked for me. I did not put it in writing till a few years ago. It's the it's a personal trust community, as you mentioned earlier. And it's a workbook that I have, and you can sort of walk through it all. And the way I think about it is we all have this fear of belonging. And until you feel like you belong, you can't start to build the confidence and then ultimately believe in who you are and where you're going in life. And that's sort of a journey you have to go on. And the second part of all that is to sit down and really identify, I call it your North Star. You can call it whatever you want, but it's that place where you're super excited about, you're scared, but it's not dangerous, as I said. And once you've done that work, uh, and you can do it yourself, obviously the workbook is there, you can just do it on a piece of paper, it's not complicated. 
but life's a team sport. You can't do it on your own. And so the answer your question, the second way is you've got to go make sure you got people in your life. And I use the analogy of a trampoline. Like if you've got a trampoline uh, and these people are all holding up the trampoline while you're bouncing up and down. So many of us, every day you're going to fall off that trampoline and you could get really hurt. But if you've got this trampoline, this personal trust community of people across the five elements of your well-being, which is physically, intellectually, emotionally, socially, and spiritually, and they're holding up this trampoline, if you start to go off towards the edge and you're having a bad day, they move the trampoline so you're always centered. And these people will never let you fall. And that's the critical piece that uh, allows you to go from, yeah, I want to be someone over here, but I'm so scared to do it. If you have this right people around you who drop anything to help you along the way across all your well-being aspects, I believe people can unlock themselves and live the life they want to. How much, if any, is chicken and the egg? Do I need to be doing this work to know me to be able to develop those relationships or do I already have some of those relationships? It probably all depends. Yeah, it's fascinating. You know, there's everybody said, you know, Mike, you got to put this in writing. It's such a simple, great idea. And that's in the Vistage community or people in branding or whatever. And I thought, yeah, it's so simple. Why is it so hard? Just go find people that you care about. They care about you and so on. But it's not that easy because outside of I love you, the three most powerful words in life are I need help. Hmm. And people are so fearful for asking help because they'll feel they get rejected and they make a lot of excuses. So I would say to answer your question, the majority of people do have a few folks in their life that they have the kind of relationship I'm describing. In fact, when I show them that little diagram of those five areas of your well-being, invariably people point to one or two and said, yeah, I've got someone here. And I'll give you an example. Someone said, yeah, I have my best friend from college, successful business person, known him for 40 years, we go out for drinks, we laugh and joke, but I've never asked him for business advice. And yet the biggest challenge in my business, he's probably the best person to ask about it. And so mm. you ask the question, why not? Well, he's very busy. I don't know if he's got time. He's probably, done. and then when you really dig in deep and I'm, I have one skill in my life, other things I don't is discernment. And what I uncover is people are afraid that if they were to ask that person, that person might think less of them saying, well, why don't you know the answer to this? You're a business guy, right? Or they're afraid the person, I don't have time for you. When reality is that person's more than likely to jump in and quickly help you. And so that is, yes, people do have a few of those folks in their life. And then they have a few folks they wish they knew better. They just are so afraid of saying, I need help. And the work I do is saying, not only you have to ask for help, you got to be really crystal, crystal clear what you're asking help for. I don't know about you, but it's very frustrating when someone calls you and asks for help and they're all over the place. It's exhausting, right? So part of the work is not only saying, I need some help, saying what exactly you want help for and get that clarity. And then not being afraid to you know, knock on the door or reach out on the phone. I need help. Express what you need help in. And I guarantee those people will be more than willing to help you. There's enough studies out there that say that it will uh, uh, help you tremendously. People are always wanting to help because it lifts them up too. Yeah, I think that that's a really powerful thing. And like we talked about sort of at the beginning that so many of us do carry around similar feelings and insecurities. And we also have the desire to belong that we're all probably feeling something like this. So. Yeah. When somebody does raise their hand and have the courage to say that I need help, it's like, oh, you now, hey, I'm I'm in a position to help, and 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 I I identify with what this person is saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. having, I think the five elements that you're talking about are really really helpful because if I were just to ask you, or probably not you, but somebody, like what, how, how is everything in life going? Oh, it's fine. Well, if you break it down into, you know, your intellectual, your well-being, your relationships, whatever those five are specifically, I think you already told me, but it helps us to to um, really sort of get get more focused. Yeah, because I think people's well-being, everyone talks about it, you know, the brain health, we got mental, all this stuff coming out of COVID. 
I think the areas of well-being that I have noticed with people is like physically, who are those people that are helping you physically? So I did a half Ironman recently and a lot of people would say, well, I'm sure your mother is in your trust community. Well, she is, but she's not the person I'm going to call when I need support, when I'm struggling physically, getting ready sure. for training event, right? Because she'll just say, don't do it. You're going to get hurt. So I have to find <laughs> somebody who's got the expertise, who can listen to me and not judge me. That's the big thing. These people don't judge you. They listen to you and they provide uh, support and resources for you. So it's, you know, physically, intellectually. And by the way, this could be listening to podcasts. It could be reading books. It could be watching documentaries on some of these. Emotionally, you know, I have someone who is a phenomenal human being. Tim, someone, if I'm struggling emotionally, I can call him. And what I envision the other end to give your audience a visual is I envision Tim gets my text or call, even if he's not ready, available at that moment, I hear him dropping everything, looking at his calendar and say, yeah, Mike, call me at three o'clock. And he doesn't give me the answers I need, but he listens to me. I know he's not judging me, he just is there to provide the resource so I can lift myself back up and get on that horse. And same with spiritually and socially and having those people around you. But I'll tell you, it's frightening how many people don't have relationships, especially men, quite honestly, do not have a lot of relationships. And I've done work on this in group settings where people break down and they start choking up and saying, I don't have these people in my life. They get caught up in their job or they get caught up in their identification as a leader and they're so it's it's deep work, um, but boy, when somebody does the work, it's really awesome to watch them get unleashed and live the life they want. It's phenomenal. So I, that's why I love doing it. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And <clears throat> you mentioned intention, and that's I think that that's such an important part of 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 life, just just in general. But we all have communities, whether we're <clears throat> whether we're being intentional about them or not. And it's the people that you're gravitating towards. If you like video games, well, you're part of the video game community. If you're you know, part of an alumni association, well, that, that, that's it. And something I really I, I respect about Vistage so much is it provides that community and it's, it's for folks who are business owners. So it's entrepreneurial minded. Um, and my, my impression is that it is sort of that built-in trust community that we're talking about. Yeah, Vistage, so it's about getting high integrity, small, mid-sized business owners who are growth oriented. So you got to be personally and professionally growth oriented. And you really care about the community around you and humanity. Those are the right people for an audience of Vistage. And then my role is a chair is to create that safe, confidential environment where people will share things. Because let's face it, whether you're an entrepreneur or a solopreneur, or whether you're running a company, who do you talk to? Who do you go to to get things answered? You don't have those people. And so the Vistage is a community, and that's why I enjoy it so much, because I get to have impact on 12, 16 people versus one at a company and then the audience itself. So I have the leaders and then their company's employees. So you can impact thousands of people versus maybe 20, 30, 50 in one company. So, yeah, it's a great, great way to do the work I do. I enjoy that part of it. I love it. So, Mike, I'm going to have to edit this out. My three-year-old is screaming right outside my door right now. <laughs> I don't hear it. So it's okay to me. Okay. Just give me one second, please. Sorry about that. But I think there's a good example. That's a human moment. That's just being human. And most people, maybe three years before Zoom and all that, would be so scared to have this and embarrassed. There's no reason. This is life, right? So I think that's the cool thing about what just happened. Oh, for sure. <laughs> that That is just life. Uh, that's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I appreciate that. I appreciate the patience. Anyway, yeah. all right. I want to be able to uh, 
wrap this up appropriately, sir. Yeah. All right. So, well, Mike, thank you so much for coming on. Where can people learn more about you and how, how can they engage with you? I'm interested in, in putting this worksheet into people's hands as well. So give us everything. Yeah, first and foremost, I do most of my communication via LinkedIn, I find to be a great venue. So I do a lot of blogging and work on LinkedIn would be one. Two, I do have a website. It's mikethorne.co, not com.co, which is where all the work sits and all the podcasts. Uh, there's a TED Talk I did there um, around asking for help, which is interesting for those that are curious about that. Um, those are the places I would say. So LinkedIn and then uh, my website, MikeThorne.co, would be the two places I would look to. And in that MikeThorne.co website is the workbook. It's pretty straightforward. You can download. It's only seven pages. And I do get communicated when someone downloads it. If they'd like to have me work with them and help them, certainly willing to go do that um, because I love just helping people. Excellent. Well, if you enjoyed as much as I did, show Mike your appreciation and share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas. Find Mike on LinkedIn and then go to mikethorne.co. It's M-I-K-E-T-H-T-H-O-R-N-E.co and check out everything Mike is working on. Check out the TED Talk, pick up a copy of his book and pick up the workbook as well. And I think that engaging in this kind of work is one is some of the most important work that we as human beings can do because there's something something under the surface for 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 all of us that if we could address and overcome would transform us more into the human beings that 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 we really are so thanks again mike thank you take care george and until next time remember do your part by doing your best